I'm going to be going over what the workflow process is for how a building even gets conceptualized and how it gets designed and all the way taking it through construction, showing you what that process looks like for the building design team and uh, particularly for the structural engineering consultant. This is important if you want to get into the structural engineering industry or if you're already in it because a lot of the times, you know, it's not just calcs. There's a lot of uh, coordination going on with different disciplines and different teams and it's really important to figure out what the bigger picture is because a lot of the times it's not just the calc. Some things are more important and you shouldn't be focusing on that when you should be focusing on more important things to get the project moving and keep everyone going. Hi, I'm Matt Picardo. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the Southern California area and I work a lot on the structural engineering of buildings. And on this channel, I make a lot of structural engineering career videos. So make sure to like and subscribe if that's what you're into. Before we get into the structural engineering workflow, it's, it's good to know what the whole overall process is for how even a building even gets there. So it starts off with an owner or a developer. They basically want a building uh, designed and constructed. So the first process that they do is they hire an architect to design the building first. What the architect does, they need their own team of consultants because that they can't do everything themselves. They need the engineers and the contractors and, and other uh, consultants that they need. But for the most part, it's the structural engineer, the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineers, and the contractors. So the architect's gonna hire this team and the architect's gonna lead the process to basically get the building designed. This is the most typical process. Sometimes the owner and developers will hire the contractor that's gonna be in charge of the team and sometimes even the structural engineer also. That basically is the project manager of the whole building design process. But for the most part, this is what's most typical that you'll probably uh, see most in the US at least. Now let's get more into the structural engineering workflow. So we have the structural engineer, architect, mechanical, electrical and plumbing engineers. What we want to do, our end product, is the drawings and the blueprints for a building. We are going to give the, get the drawings, get the blueprints, and give them to the contractor so they can build the building. It's kind of like a Lego set. So now let's jump into this workflow. How does the structural engineer actually get these drawings and blueprints out uh, to the contractor? So getting more into the workflow, this is the structural engineer. A work, these are the phases that we go through, at least for a consulting firm. Uh, in schematic design, we're going to focus on uh, client needs, such as uh, the architect's gonna give us some preliminary drawings. So for example, it's pretty much just sketches. We're going to, the architect's gonna provide us a preliminary layout, some preliminary designs of a typical floor plan that they want. And our job in this phase, in the schematic design phase, is to uh, get the gravity and the lateral systems out. So the shear walls, uh, kind of the preliminary designs that we're thinking of and the gravity layouts and the column sizes. So uh, really preliminary things, but getting the concept, the gravity and the lateral concepts in there. This is where we really focus on the client needs. Uh, what are they looking for? Do they need space in certain locations? So this is where we do a lot of the coordination and a lot of things are changing and, and moving around. And one of the main points in this phase is just to do enough calcs that we can make sure that we're pretty comfortable that these uh, sizes and this type of layout is going to work. This is not the phase where we get into uh, the final models and all the detailing. It's literally pretty much just a sketch. This is just something that we're sketching out and just coordinating. Uh, this is how we're coordinating through just sketches. The next phase after schematic design is going to be a design development or the DD drawings. Uh, in a DD's, in a design development drawings, what our main goal is we are gonna pretty much give them either sketches or actual drawings. And our main goal for this phase is basically getting the geometry correct. And basically getting the sizes, getting the 18 inch concrete shear walls, and getting the drop caps in there, getting the 10 inch slabs. So we wanna make sure that the geometry is not gonna change. Uh, these are the locations of where all the columns are gonna be. So 
we want to just lock down with the architect and the design team that, hey, these are all the locations, these are all the sizes of all the structural members. Uh, we want to lock that down and again, doing enough calcs to make sure that this works. We'll also be cutting some typical details and and whatnot, but you can see that we're not showing any reinforcement in this. It's still pretty much the designs under development. And once we're done with this, it'll look something like this where all the geometry is laid out. Why are these phases important? Well, because if you're working for a firm, you want to see what's important during that phase. You don't want to focus too much on the calcs and keep tweaking your structural analysis model while you should be focusing on what's more important during that phase. So you don't want to be focusing on the wrong thing, especially if engineers tend to, especially if they're newer, they tend to focus a lot on the calcs and the structural analysis models. So once the design development drawings are done, or the DD drawings are done, the next phase are the construction documents. This is when we are going to show pretty much everything that needs to be shown in order to build, uh, to construct the building. So for example, let's just compare the two. Let's just compare uh, the DD drawings, which are on the left, or yeah, which are on the left, and let's compare them to uh, pretty much a CD level set. Over here, you can see that we have the reinforcement, all the reinforcements called out. Uh, for example, all this reinforcement's called out, and we have the typical details and all the details called out. We have all the sizes and the reinforcement scheduled on there and all the details are cut out too so you can see that pretty much all these things need to be on there in order to basically construct the building so all the reinforcement needs to be on there all the typical and the special details need to be on there basically it needs to be a full construction set and during this phase this is when we get the calc package together in order for us to go to the next phase so after the construction documents are pretty much done the next phase is we need to go through the permitting process. This is where we submit our, our drawings and our plans to the city and our calc package. So we're gonna go through a, a, a plan checking process with them. They're gonna go, go through our calcs and go through our drawings and they might catch stuff. They're basically checking the, our drawings to make sure that it complies with uh, city standards and making sure that we caught everything too. So once the plan checkers are are good to go and the building's permitted, they issue us a permit for, for the drawings so they can now construct the building. This is when we're gonna give the drawings to the contractor for them to build. So during this phase, the contractor's gonna be building the building and this is when we get into the construction administration phase. It's also known as construction support services or CSS. During this process, this is when we'll be going getting submittals, which are basically fabrication drawings, what they're actually going to fabricate in the shop. And we're, we'll be back checking those and we'll also be getting RFIs from the contractor, a request for information. Basically, the contractor is gonna have questions out in the field. Maybe something went wrong in the field or they need a clarification on the drawings or, or something came up and they need to adjust structural members uh, because of maybe a, a sewer pipe is in the way, so maybe they need to coordinate an opening. Basically things that are happening out in the field that they either need clarified or they need uh, fixes and solutions for. This is also the time we'll, we'll be doing structural observations going out to the site uh, to make sure everything looks correct also. It's also during this phase where our response and, and our response time is most critical because sometimes some of these, these issues that they need a response on, if they don't have a uh, proper response for us in time. It may delay the project because if the team doesn't find a solution for whatever they're ex encountering in the field, then the whole project can get delayed. And that's pretty much money down the drain. <music>